In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about temperature conversions. So temperature is just the way we measure how hot or how cold something is. And if you're from the United States, you're probably pretty familiar with the Fahrenheit scale of temperature. That's just the scale we use to determine how hot it is outside. So if you turn on the weather channel, it'll tell you the temperature in Fahrenheit. And you're probably familiar with Celsius, which is the temperature scale the rest of the world uses to talk about how hot or cold it is outside. And Celsius is also more commonly used in science than Fahrenheit. A temperature scale that's probably less familiar to most people is the Kelvin scale. And the Kelvin scale is really unique. And that's because it's what we call an absolute scale of temperature. What does that mean? Well, temperature turns out to just measure how quickly molecules are moving. So if stuff's moving really fast, then that's really hot. And if stuff's moving really slow, then that's cold. And if you think about how cold could something possibly get? Well, if all motion stops, so it's going fast and colder, 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 eventually motion stops. That's as cold as we could get. And what Kelvin does is it says, let's call that zero degrees when it gets as cold as possible. So Kelvin sets for its zero point absolute zero, as cold as you can possibly get. So those are the three temperature scales that you'll commonly see in chemistry. And Kelvin is the one that's pretty much unique to the scientific field. So in, in chemistry, we almost always want to use Celsius or Kelvin, but that's not always the temperature scale you use when you take a measurement. So it's important to be able to convert between them. So first we're going to talk about going between Fahrenheit and Celsius, and then we're going to talk about going between Kelvin and Celsius. So first, going between Fahrenheit and Celsius. I've broken this process down into two steps. Basically here, we're just using a little algebra and then plugging in our numbers to compute the answer. So step one says rearrange the equation for target temperature. What is it talking about with this equation? Well, here we can see the equation reads F, which stands for temperature in Fahrenheit, is equal to 1.8 times C, which is our temperature in Celsius, plus 32. So what this equation is telling us is plug in our temperature in Celsius, multiply it by that 1.8, add 32, and we'll get out our temperature in Fahrenheit. That's how we do these conversions. So we can see that in this case, our target temperature, what we need to rearrange for, is Fahrenheit. Because the question reads, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. What is this temperature in Fahrenheit? So we're trying to get to Fahrenheit. So we can actually see basically step one, which says rearrange the equation for target temperature, is already done. We're already, we've already solved this equation for Fahrenheit. So we're done with step one. So step two just says perform the calculation. So all we do is we plug in our number and perform the calculation. So we're going to take 100 degrees Celsius, which is uh, the value given for our temperature in Celsius, and plug it in to this guy right here. So what that's going to do when we write that out is it's going to tell us that our temperature is equal to 1.8 times our 100 degrees Celsius. We're just plugging that guy in, and then we got to add 32 to it. Now, if we do that calculation in our calculator, you'll see that 1.8 times 100 is 180, and then you add that 32, and you're going to get 212. So that's our temperature in Fahrenheit. Last consideration here is just thinking about significant figures. So whenever you do a calculation and you put numbers in and you get an answer out, you want to ask yourself, how many significant figures should my answer have? And in this case, the rule to remember for temperature conversions is just sig figs out tells you how many, or sig figs in tells you how many sig figs you should get out. In other words, look at the number you're plugging in. How many significant figures does it have? That's the same number of significant figures your answer should have. So you don't need to think about all of the different rules for sig fig calculations here. Just remember that the number of sig figs your input has is the same number of sig figs your output should have. So our input here is 100 degrees Celsius. And if we go up to that guy and we want to count how many sig figs are there, we can see that we have one, two, three, four sig figs. Those trailing zeros, the zeros after the one, are significant because remember there's that written decimal point. So that gives us four sig figs. So our 100 has four sig figs, that means our answer we put out should have four sig figs, which means we just want to keep these first four digits here. So we can get rid of this last zero. And again, we always follow our standard rounding rules here, but since that's a zero there for our last uh, number written, we don't need to worry about any rounding up. All right, so our answer is 212.0 degrees Fahrenheit. 
what that tells us is water boils at 100 degrees uh, Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now we're gonna go the other direction. This next question says, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. What is this temperature in Celsius? Well, this problem involves a little more work. We have to do some algebra here before we can solve for our temperature in Celsius. So it says, step one says rearrange the equation for our target temperature. And now our target temperature is Celsius. We wanna to go to Celsius from Fahrenheit. So that means we need to get the C here all by itself. So we wanna get that C by itself so we can do our calculation. So how do we do that? Well, if you recall the rules from algebra, we can just subtract 32 from both sides to get rid of that 32 on the left-hand side. So we're gonna subtract 32 from the left and right-hand side, and that's gonna give us F minus 32 on the right-hand side, and it's gonna give us 1.8 C on the right-hand side, because our 32 minus 32 cancel out. When I thir take 32 and subtract 32, I just get zero. And over here, all I'm doing is taking F and subtracting 32. So that's why I get the equation below. One more step of algebra here before we're done. We wanna divide both sides by 1.8. Why do we wanna do that? Well, that's gonna get rid of our 1.8 by that C. And remember, the whole goal is to get C by itself. So 1.8 divided by 1.8, gives us one, and we get rid of that number in front of the C. Remember, when we divide both sides by 1.8, we have to divide the entire left and right side by 1.8. So that's why I'm dividing both F and that 32 by 1.8. All right, so our 1.8s cancel, and what we get out is F minus 32 divided by 1.8 is equal to our temperature in Celsius. Now, what we do is we plug in 32 for our temperature in Fahrenheit because that's what the problem tells us, that we have a temperature of 32 degrees in Fahrenheit. So when we do that, we get 32 minus 32 over 1.8. And it's pretty easy to see that 32 minus 32 just gives us zero. So we don't even have to plug that into our calculator. We can tell that we have a temperature of zero degrees Celsius. So again, last consideration here is how many sig figs should I have? Well, remember, the answer I get out should have the same number of sig figs as the number I put in. And up here, 32 degrees Fahrenheit has two sig figs. So that means our answer should have two sig figs. So instead of writing zero, I'm gonna have to write 0, 0.0. And that's gonna be our final answer, 0, 0.0. That gives me the temperature with two sig figs. So zero degrees Celsius is freezing, and so is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we just found out. Okay, so that's going between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Now we're gonna talk about going between Kelvin and Celsius. This is actually the more important conversion to get down, and luckily it's also the easier one. The reason it's more important is a lot of equations you'll see later on in chemistry require that you have your temperature in Kelvin. So this is a conversion you'll become quite comfortable with over the semester, so it's a good idea to go ahead and get it down as soon as possible. All right, so our equation here says K equals C plus 273.15. So that's just telling us that the temperature in Kelvin is equal to the temperature in Celsius plus 273.15. All right, and again, we're just going to follow these same two steps. We're going to rearrange the equation for the target temperature. Now we're dealing with a different equation. That's all that's changed. And we're going to perform the calculation. So our question reads, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. What is this temperature in Kelvin? So, all I'm gonna do is rearrange for the target temperature. What's the target temperature in this case? Kelvin, which conveniently, I already have that guy. So step one, already done. We've already rearranged for the target temperature because the target temperature is Kelvin. And that means all I need to do is plug in, where I see this C, I need to plug in 100 degrees because that's what the problem tells us our temperature is in Celsius. So we take 100 degrees and then we add 273.15. And when we do that, we can see that we'll get 373.15. And the units there are K for Kelvin. 
Kelvin is the only temperature scale where we don't use that little degree sign, the little zero up at the top of the K or F or C. There's no degree sign when we answer in Kelvin. All right, last thing to do is think about significant figures. So remember, sig figs in is the same as sig figs out. So we look at the number we put in, 100 degrees Celsius. And here we see that we have one, two, three, four sig figs. Remember, trailing, trailing zeros are sig figs if there's a written decimal point, which we see right there. All right, so I should have four sig figs, which means basically I wanna get rid of this last five. And that's gonna give me, when I do that, two, or I'm sorry, 373.2, because we gotta round that one up since the number behind it is a five. So we get 373.2 Kelvin. That turns out to be the temperature water boils at in Kelvin. So the last conversion we're gonna do is just to take Kelvin to Celsius. And so here, there's a little algebra we gotta do, but the steps are the same. Step one says rearrange the equation for target temperature. And the question reads, absolute zero is 0.0, .0 Kelvin. What is this temperature in Celsius? And so we know that our target temperature is Celsius. And so we wanna rearrange this equation for that C there. How do we do that? Well, all we're gonna do is subtract 273 0.15 from both sides, and that's gonna get rid of that 273. Okay, so when we subtract 273.15 from both sides, we're gonna get out K minus 273.15 is equal to our temperature in Celsius. And again, that's just because our 273 minus 273 gives us zero, so that goes away, it can, it's canceled out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in our temperature in Kelvin into this K down here. So that K, in this case, is 0, 0.0 Kelvin. So we plug in 0, 0.0 there, and then we subtract 273.15. When I do that, I'm just gonna get negative 273.15. And then my units are Kelvin again, or I'm sorry, Celsius, which does have a degree sign. All right, and now the last thing to do is think about sig figs. And remember, sig figs in is sig figs out. And so this 0, 0.0 turns out to have two sig figs. We have that written decimal point there. And that means we want to round our minus 273.15 to two sig figs. So we only want to leave behind these two guys. And the way we get rid of that three as a sig fig is just rounding it to a zero. So this will give us negative 270 degrees Celsius. And notice I can't write a decimal there, right? If I write a decimal after that zero, then suddenly that trailing zero becomes significant. So the way I round a two sig figs is I round that three here to a zero and I get rid of that decimal. I gotta get rid of the decimal point, otherwise that zero, which is trailing, would be significant. So what this problem is telling us is that absolute zero in Celsius is about minus 270 degrees. So that means at minus 270 degrees Celsius, all motion would stop. And that's how you can convert between Celsius and Kelvin. So in this video, we've talked about temperature conversions, how you can go from one temperature scale to another. We've gone between Fahrenheit and Celsius and also between Kelvin and Celsius. If you have any questions, please leave them below this video. You can always subscribe to receive updates about my videos or visit my channel. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry.